internet problems. Hello, welcome back to Class Culture. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Hello. I miss seeing you guys on live. I've just been in a place where I don't want to show myself. I am in my crash pad. Welcome back to Class Culture. I am uploading this video about my massage therapy license because with a chat, I, you know how it is, I engage. So I just wanted to get this good information out. So welcome back to class. It is, I'm going to be late for all of my shows today. <laughs> I don't have enough time in the day, but thank you guys for rocking with me for the whole month of January. You're here to stay. You are my core support, and I appreciate you. Just tell everybody about the channel. Let them know what we do over here, how we rock and roll over here, how we have fun, how we keep it real, keep it 100, all of that. My playlists are rocking. Thank you so much, Replay Crew. I adore you. Shout out to the professors my brass and sass in my live chats. I'll be live tonight. It's just a bumpy road today. Okay. So shout out to the diplomats up in the skybox. We don't do bushes, but everyone is welcome. So I appreciate you, boo. I have been networking. I have been doing my poetry videos. February is going to be off the chain, so get ready. Yes, we're back. Yes, I have my adult beverage because I'm going to be on live for the next three hours, and I'm having a good day. So let me talk about LMT and me, licensed massage therapy. That's what it's called in the business, at least in Nevada, where I got licensed. And I'm here to tell the story. I thought about it. I said, is this a story time? I'm not, not really, because I'm encouraging everyone to get involved in a moonlighting job, something on the side that's legal, that will rack up your social security. So I'm going to really, really, really put my foot in it the next two or three years in different ways. And I'll bring you along plus my production stuff. So it allows me to do what I love to do. Okay. So I wanted to share this little, I haven't done a haul in a long time because I haven't been shopping during the coronavirus because it's not healthy. I got this in Target. It says, okay, but first my face mask and it's a face mask cover. Isn't that cute? It's a dollar. I didn't rip it off yet. I wanted to show it to you first and you place your face mask in it. So it doesn't get all grimy in your purse. Okay. You can also put other things in there, I'm sure. But yeah, I saw it and I said, I'm getting it. And I bought one for my daughter too. So yeah, isn't it cute? So yeah. And it's just the plastic. It's about, I don't know, seven inches by three inches. And it's so cute and compact. So I got that. I got a new mask and it's double-sided, and it matches my umbrella. It's been raining in San Francisco, so I have maybe about 20 because I wear lipstick. And lately, you guys, I, I, I always forget something, right? I've been putting a paper tissue and or a mask. I'm running out of the paper mask. I don't really care when I run out. I run out. I don't need them anymore because... It is what it is. I'm, I'm still healthy. I've been to the VA. I don't have the virus or anything. But yeah, I'm, I'm getting reverses now. Okay, so this is really cute. They never fit my ears, so I always have to, you know, knot it up at the end. So you like my nail polish? Isn't it pretty and sparkly? It's Sally Hansen's Mega Strength. I'm claiming it, Lady Millionaire, okay? I'm claiming it, Lady Millionaire, so yes. All right, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. I, I haven't, I just, I do a lot of food shopping. I do a lot of, you know, replenishing supplies. Now it came in this, 
and you know we keep everything and it came in the little pouch it says mask mask stash but it's too little for a mask so i'm gonna figure out what else i'm gonna use for it and you'll see it i might even put it on my keychain and put something else in it i don't know so it's cute but i know i'm not gonna stuff a mask in there i'm not gonna do it and i've been uh going through all my magazines. So you'll see more of this when I do my um, vision board. So yes, they're over there. We'll talk about it later. I'll do a whole video in February. So just get your magazines, tear them out, look at videos, all that good stuff. All right. So let's get on with the subject. I'm just going to be doing a lot of screen sharing because I am cleaning my desktop. I'm cleaning my files. And I just wanted to tell the story on why I became a massage therapist. So cheers. Clink. <laughs> mm. I'm having Japanese gin. I bought it at Trader Joe's. It, it's my favorite beautiful bottle. Sometimes I reuse these, sometimes I don't. I don't know. And I like it. It's smooth. I'm drinking it with, and I made sure I remembered it this time, with Simply Fruit Punch. Okay? I like the combination and the flavors. It almost tastes like a cocktail. I know some people like it with cranberry juice and all that stuff. The cranberry juice makes it too tart for me, and I like this combination. So, yeah, it's, it's a cute little cocktail. It's simple, easy, and affordable. Okay, so let's talk about it. Okay, so when my mommy moved to Las Vegas, my husband and I were living in Long Beach, uh, beautiful uh, beach home. And after the wedding, my mom decided, yes, she wanted to move out of Michigan. And we told her that where she wanted to move, we would help her. And she had three places in mind. She had, I think it was somewhere in the Caribbean, Hawaii, and Las Vegas. So just so happened that my husband would do many trips, round trips to Vegas, back and forth, back and forth, doing business. No big deal. I had been back and forth. I had been to Vegas so many times before I met him. Vegas is not really my thing, my jam, but when you go, it's fun, and then I'm ready to come home. So I had been to Vegas many a times, and I asked her, I said, Mom, you don't really gamble like that. You don't. Re that's not really your lifestyle. The shows was more of her lifestyle. The fun, the fabulous buffets, the club, um, nightclub setting, things like that was her lifestyle. And I told her it's really changed since she enjoyed Vegas. Her Vegas was the 70s and the 80s. Our Vegas is totally different. So she had took a trip back, went back home and decided. She says, Vegas it is. I said, okay, I'll even get like a part-time job there, you know, driving back and forth, having fun just to help you out because I get bored a lot. You know, they don't need to know if I'm going to stay there for two or three months. I just like getting jobs where I can get discounts on things. And it was during the holidays. So um, she said, let's do it. So I went on my own and scouted out a few places because she had given me a book with all the places she had spoken to. It was about six or seven but she has, hadn't physically been there. And that's my mom. That's like my best friend. You know, I'm not going to just, we, we, did, we weren't doing nursing homes and we don't do raggedy. No, no. Okay. We do resort and above. Now, if I'm on a road trip, side note, going place to place, I don't care where I'm staying. But if I'm staying there two to three days, it's going to be four star resort and above. Okay, now that I've said all of that, my husband's good friend allowed me to stay in his condo. I got there and there was no furniture in the condo. And I'm like, well, where am I supposed to sleep? I don't have a bed. What is this? So my husband was pissed off. 
And he says, well, can you stay there for one night? I'm like, no, I need to sleep on something. It's literally a condo with no furniture, nothing. Long story short, he wanted her to move in his place. Well, he could have said that, but I'm there and I need some place to sleep. So for some reason, their messages, you know how fellas are sometimes, they got their message, message crossed. He was embarrassed. My husband was mad. I was like, fuck that. You're going to put me in a hotel. So I ended up staying in the Flamingo and I stayed for four days. Now I showed her a picture of his place. I showed her a picture of two other places. The other four places I walked in and I walked right back out. I said, no, nobody I'm related to will live here. They were on the, let's say there's a, you know, a sliding, you know, ruler here. They were on the going to heaven and I'm 55 about to move in and a resort and enjoy my life. Okay. She was more on the 55 to 60. Even though she was 80 years old, she was just like Gigi Darling. We look young, we play hard, we still live fabulous lives. So she was on that, you know, end of the ruler, okay? I was like, honey, you would be depressed and angry if I put you in some of these places. They are for people who are on their way to heaven. You need your own place, your own view, your own, you know, valet, things like that. And she said, yeah, exactly. So we chose and it was on Flamingo and it was Flamingo in Eastern and it was near all the clinics and hospitals she needed. Okay. Her health was pretty good. She had her medicine, her doctors, all that good stuff. Long story short, from 80 to 83 she was fine living the happy i'm retired in vegas life she even admitted she should have moved there when she was 60. that was her thing not mine okay and i told her it's okay you're here now so we finally got her settled everything she flew in before she even got there she was mailed she had signed her lease all that good stuff the people met me they loved me they allowed her to send her belongings there ahead of time. So I was allowed to go there, get the key, and set her whole apartment up. All she had to do was walk through the door. Now, she didn't have a bed or furniture yet, just her tchotchkes. Her kitchen was set up, dining room table. You know, everything she packed, I unpacked and put it in place. So that was her big surprise. Because when she landed, she thought she was going to have to do all of that, and it was already done. The great thing about her place where she lived, they had places where family could come in and visit mm -hmm, and furnished rooms where you could rent. So she lived in that furnished room for about two days until her bed, dining room, and or not dining room, living room, and some other th patio furniture came. So she was treated like a queen. A year after that is when my daughter got married. That's a whole different story in Las Vegas. It was fabulous. Fingers crossed we're planning her 10 year anniversary this year. Maybe we'll go back. So I'm trying to get them to go back. Anywho, um, she was settled. I was happy, got my little part-time job that Christmas, drove back and forth. We were living great lives. Everything was fine. My husband went back to Poland in 2013. Okay. I decided mm -hmm, that I just wanted to move on with my life and help my mom. But at the time she was keeping it from me that she wasn't feeling that well. She kept going in and out of the hospital without even telling me. And I was like, don't do that. And she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm slowing down. She was 83. She passed at 85. So I said, you know what? Forget it. I can put my life on hold. It's fine. I'll come stay with you. Be your caregiver. Okay. So that's what I did in 2014. No, I take that back. 2013. He left 2012, 2013, and then 2014, I was with her. She passed September 
2014. Long story short. Now, while I was there and I moved in, I closed my house down in Las Vegas, in Long Beach. I closed my house down. We had a little house where he had a warehouse. I closed that down. I said, I don't want anything. I'm starting fresh. I, clean slate. It's one of my favorite words. It's how I live my life. It's in the military. You go from base to base, clean slate. So anybody that's military that doesn't understand what I'm talking about, they're playing in your face. Anyway, clean slate. Everything is in storage, right? I'm there being her caregiver. Six months, from, no, a year before she passed away, she became bedridden, but she still got around with her walker, but she, she didn't go outside anymore after that. She just couldn't. You know, she was on the heavier side, but she was weaker. And because of her conditions and her ailments, she got edema. Okay, look it up. Swelling, water, drainage, all of that. She kept going in and out of the hospital. It is what it, what it is. It's the end of life. That's the signs of end of life. When older people get edema, they become sedentary. Her mind was there, but she was just tired all the time. And we had our interactions. Up until that, it was fun, blast, happy party. But then it was just end of life. Okay? And that was okay. So it was almost like any day now. But she was still getting up and doing things. It was very um, interesting. And plus, that was my mom. But I had already kind of turned off the daughter switch, and I was her caregiver. And I was really good at it. And it was almost like it was meant to be. And we would have conversations like, it's almost like I was the oops. But she said, and we were always called each other like twins. We had so much in common. But she would always make comments like, now I know why you were born. Okay. I gave birth to you so you could take care of me. You are my arms and my legs. You are my mind. You, you're, I trust every. She trusted me completely with everything. So that was the beautiful side of it. But on the flip side of it, this is a little girl watching her mommy go to heaven. That's the hard side. Okay. But a year into it, I was like, well, the place where she lived, you had to be mobile in a certain condition. And they checked on you. They had housekeeping, all of that. But I kept close um, I kept in close contact with the people who ran the place. It was like a resort. It was beautiful. Still is. It's still there. But times have changed in Las Vegas. It's not like it used to be even 10 years ago. It's a shame. But anyway, it was a, it was a good go. They tried really, really hard. The management had changed. So I said to the new management, what's going to happen now? They said, well, everyone's going to get evaluated. If they need extra care, they have to either move or get full, you know, round the clock help. And I, she could afford the good life, but she couldn't afford that life. That was too expensive. And I said, well, you know, give me the terms. And they said, well, she needs a live-in nurse or someone who can do A, B, and C. Because she had edema so bad and her doctors had to pass over what they considered were her conditions over to the facility, I was like, oh, that's a massage therapist just to come and do that? And they were like, yeah, that's all they have to do, take her vitals and all that good stuff. I was like, I can do that. They were like, are you a licensed massage therapist? I said, I can become one in seven months. Are you willing and to wait? They were like, absolutely. You, you, we love you guys. You were on the top of the list as far as the old management telling us who to keep. I said, yeah, of course we were, you know, I'm Gigi Darling. <laughs> and that was my mother. Okay. The queen of Gigi Darling. So, and I've told you her story a million times. If you don't know it, click the video and find out. But anyway, yeah, that's why I went to massage therapy school. Not only was it fun and a delight and a privilege I learned something. I grew. We have been spa girls all my life. I grew up in the spa. My mom would go to the spa all the time. She started going to the spa maybe when I was two or three. Okay. So it was a part of our life. So it was no big deal. So I needed to open this show with that story as to the why. It was, of course, it was hard. I miss her every day. I hate that she's not here. 
I she's here with me every day, but I hate that she's not physically here. It one day I'll tell the story of her uh, ascending to heaven, but it was quite interesting, and I, I don't regret anything. But I think anybody who has someone who's older in the family, keep it in the family. I didn't want to give that money to anyone else. I said, I can go to massage therapy school and I can do that myself. And the funny thing about it is after I got licensed and she hated that she wasn't at my graduation, it was okay. After I got my license and during my studies, she helped me. Remember, she was a teacher, still was a teacher. She helped me study. She was so proud of me. She told me she was proud of me. She told me she loved me. She told me she was grateful. She told me she I would never know. I knew. It was beautiful. So before I start crying, I'm going to share some of these um, screen shares. I think everyone should figure out how to help a loved one. So I'm going to go through these pictures. Yeah, it's it's a good, holy, healing subject during this time of year because I miss her so much. I'm sure you guys will hear me. I want you to just see the whole picture. So I think every, especially if you are an African-American living through these tough times, you have ailments, talk to your doctor. If you're not ailing, once a month, get a massage. I'm pledging to myself because I have it during the coronavirus pandemic, but I'm, I, I feel that I can get back to it now. I can feel the difference. And even uh, me and my daughter are going to plan a trip and I'll take you guys with me. But it, and she has a little fella and, you know, they, she, she had to put it on hold. So we're waiting for the let's go. He could come with me, but, you know, he's a little fella. And the whole idea is for her to get some peace, but we had to put it off for a couple more months, probably during her birthday month in April. But if you are not into massage therapy, I think you should be. You should do it at home. You should go to a massage therapy school and you should go to a licensed spa and treat yourself. It's healing. It's healthy. It's medicine to the soul. Okay. It's wonderful. I do candles, aromatherapy. I use soap, special soaps, special lotions. I take care of Gigi Darling. I think everyone should get into massage therapy. Okay. So let me take that away. Stop sharing. And if it's glitchy, I'm sorry. There's something going on with the internet. I think it's going to be okay. So and, and I just wanted to share this story. I just wanted to get it out. I said, no, I'm not going to wait anymore. I keep pushing it back. Now, again, when I went to school, mm -hmm, it was the purpose was to help my mother. Okay. And that's exactly what I did. I treated her like a five star queen. I made bath salts. I made sure her skin was moisturized. She was my client. She wasn't my mommy. I think the universe has rewarded me in a way I can't even explain it to you. It's like I got back tenfold because I did that. Because I can be that selfish, you know, uh, queen of a diva and just do my damn self. But when you give it back to someone such as your own mother and in a way that was genuine, I did not hold anything back. She got the best of the best. We made salts. We did essential oils. Even when she didn't want a massage, I just gave it to her. She could rub herself, even if it was just her elbows and her hands. Even if that's all you want to rub, class culture, is your thighs and your legs and your feet and the soles of your heels, do it. Treat yourself, your back, you know, your stomach, the sides, your sides. Treat yourself. Be kind to yourself. Meditate. Take a moment. Relax. 
and you have to get in the um, habit. You really do. You have to get in the habit of pampering yourself and saying no to everyone and everything else. That's spa. That's the spa life. I remember back in my mom's day, they would do retreats. You know, you would retreat for seven, eight days with no contact. You have to do that and come back the fabulous woman that you are. And I'm going to be doing a retreat in March. Now, I might include you. I might not. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. But you have to retreat. And it's not a vacation in the sense that you're taking other people with you. No, it's retreat all by yourself. Withdraw and then come back feeling refreshed. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, that's, that's when people started doing um, must, um, plastic surgery and stuff like that. No, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> so maybe this year I'll include you. But after that, it's literally all by myself. All by myself. My hair is looking weird. Okay, there you go. So I'm, I'm glad I'm back on camera. I miss you guys. Okay. So let me see. I'm cleaning. So uh, be patient. You know how it goes. So yes, I, I'm just glad that I can share this story finally. It was a journey. It was hard because, you know, your mom is at that age where, you know, she's going to heaven. She knows she's going to heaven. She would say things like, I'm good. I've completed everything in life. I'm happy. I don't need to talk to anybody else. I don't need to see this person. I said bye to them. She did not want a funeral. She did not want to wake, anything like that. She did not want to get buried. She totally got cremated. I'm getting cremated. So this is how adult her and I were with each other regarding the subject. So yes, I became her caregiver. Okay. Um, my siblings were not on deck <laughs> zero and i told her i said after you pass away i'm becoming a single child <laughs> she says you do whatever you want to do honey and i did i became her caregiver she entertained some people meaning she allowed some people to come say goodbye to her she spoke to some people on the phone and after she spoke to them, she told me exactly what she wanted me to do as far as communicating with them, yes or no. She told me everything she wanted, and that was, I was so happy. I said, Mom, don't you want a um, obituary? She says, absolutely not. <laughs> she says, nobody announced my birth. No one will. I don't want that in the paper. And, but the thing about it is she would read <laughs> obituaries, but she didn't want one. So I promised her, I said, your obituary will be the first five, six pages in my first book. She said, you got it. <laughs> so when you see my first book, you will see her obituary in there because I was like, come on now. You got to have an obituary. She was like, okay. She was like, I mean, she was a diva. She was like, okay, that will, that'll be fabulous. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> so yes, I became my mother's caregiver. You decide who you want to care give to and or for, but I'm telling you, some people aren't up for the challenge. For Gigi Darling, it was no big deal. It, it was like I was born for it. For her, I'll never do that for anyone in the whole of my life. Maybe a child or a grandchild, but nope, that, mm -mm, no. Because she loved me equally and more than anybody on planet earth. So I think that's the why, but I know my kids will be fine. They don't need me. You know, I'm going to heaven before them because that's how it should go. Knock on everything. I'm not tempting fate. I'm just saying because she gave birth to me at 35. So I was 50 when she passed away, but it was almost unfair because they had more of her than me. So, and I'm, she used to always tell me, you, you are so young at heart. You act like you're 25 years old. I said, I am. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what mother nature is doing with this body. That's who I am. But yeah, we had great discussions. We, and even when on her bad days, we could 
I could handle her and she could handle me and it was okay. Yeah, it was good. So you decide who you want to be a caregiver for. I, for me, like I said, it was easy breezy. You know, I had moved on from one stage of life to a, to the next. And now I'm in this stage and it's fine. Grandparent stage, but I'm still me. I'm still the same person, you know? I wish, I wish she was there for my daughter's wedding and everything. She was there. It was beautiful. But I wish she would have saw her first great grand, but it's okay. She has somebody in her arms right now. And I know she's looking down on my first grandchild. Okay. So then my first granddaughter and my first grandson, but she has somebody in her arms. They know who I mean, but I know she's still with us today. So, yeah, I just needed to get that part because I don't want to, to discourage people. But when there's somebody in your family or your life that wants you to do that for them, do it. It's a rewarding. The only thing I wish I would have done was to kept working because that's a whole different story time after she passed away. Oh, my God, it was it was a mess. It was a mess. I hadn't planned like I should have planned in certain ways, but. Let's go on to the um, massage therapy school of this story. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm getting this all out because I think this is going to help a lot of people. People are getting shut in now. People are getting older. Um, I've, I heard that a lot of um, homes where people sh would be going to are not allowing people to go in. So people are having the choice of being made to take care of people. And a lot of people aren't into it. Mm -hmm. So let's go on with the show. Okay. What do you learn in massage therapy school? You learn a lot. Not only do you learn how to take care of others, you learn how to take care of yourself. That's why a lot of people say, oh, you're so youthful. Your skin is so great. How do you do it? You pamper yourself. You meditate. Absolutely. You live a better life. Okay. So the first thing is school. You literally have to sit in a classroom <laughs> and learn. Okay. Um, I, had, I had my uh, business degree. And here I am entering massage therapy school. You know, at, I was, what, 48 at the time, I think. I can't remember. Uh, and that was tough. It's not that I wanted to, but I had to do it for my mom. I did not want to put her in a nursing home. Like I said before, I wasn't for that. <laughs> I wasn't even for a nurse coming in to live with her. I, was, I wasn't having it. So I said, well, it's me. And she was okay with it. OK, so I had not lied to her, but I a lot of times I was in school because she felt bad. She felt like I was she was burdening me and I she was not. I would just tell her I was at work when I was at night school because I wanted to I had to make sure I pass. It was no choice because when you see the way the classes were set up, you just entered and it was round robin wherever they were at. You started there and you completed the course. Okay. I guess I could do so you can see me. So yeah. So you can see the desk. That was my backpack there. And this was the class. This was in Nevada in Las Vegas. Okay. And I really wasn't into my, my mom's, uh, mother uh really didn't really have a career but my dad's mother and my dad's family they're totally into nursing okay i did not have that gene i don't even i didn't like touching people i didn't want to do anything like that this was just for her so something in my mind just clicked you guys i was just like i gotta do it and i can do it i want to do it and i'm going to do it OK, so this is what the classroom looked like. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing that and I'm just going to share, share, share. All right. We use different equipment. You know, when you go to a massage therapy um, facility, whether it's a fancy spa in a casino 
or massage envy or a spa you know they use stones they use apparatus you know to help for heat mm -hmm. they use washcloths they use everything so we learned everything essential oils all of that we we learned how to use all types of techniques and i'll show you that as well so every day you showed up you were in class you can see the towels and the sheets over there mm -hmm. you had to make sure your area was clean and ready and prepped sanitized ready to go okay so that was one day that i was in charge of doing it and i just wanted to show how neat and organized it was always when it was my day even when you were running around you didn't have anything to do you still had to pitch in clean everything so these are some of the tools that you use or some of the things you don't see in the background when you go to a fancy spa or resort so that was fun because I like cleaning. So that was no big deal. Okay. So we learned all types of things like bone structure. Okay. We had to learn everything about the human anatomy. We had to learn about all the uh, functions of the body. Okay. We had to put together um, all types of, we had all types of uh, tests. Let me show you this we had to put together the whole the whole skeleton we had we you know we would walk in the room with this okay and then at the end of the day we had to put it together like this and you had to say exactly and i'm not going to say exactly what they are because that's not why i'm here you had to recite every ounce of the human skeleton you had to know every bone every joint everything okay so when you meet and greet a massage therapist know they are smart they are capable and in the county of clark las vegas what do you have you have casinos what is vegas famous for um you know prostitution it's legal there so there's all types of you know regulations so we are not prostitutes there are no happy endings. We are part of the medical wellness health spectrum. Okay. We are regulated by the state of Nevada. We, are, we come under doctors, nurses, massage therapists. We work with chiropractors and all kinds of medical specialists. Okay. So we know what we're doing. We're smart people. Mm hmm so not only was my mommy proud of me she was like wow this is huge that's why she would help me study you guys so what's the next thing i want to share okay not only did you have to know the bone structures you had to know all of the muscle connections where every muscle connects and what it does and how it operates okay so you see all the different spots we had to say exactly what went where the names of the muscles their function shapes everything flash cards were everywhere in my mom's house we had so much fun i had a whole skeleton i had my um when you sign up for the school they give you a massage therapy table i had it set up in the living room i had everything all out if i i couldn't find those pictures if i ever find them i will share them with you one day and when I was either in school or at work, because I didn't tell her, um, she, when I wasn't there, she would come out and look at everything and move things around and write. I said, if you see something you think I should know, write it down. And she would. So I was including her in the process as well. Okay. So very, um, and it's not that expensive. It's about $10,000 compared to being a doctor or a nurse that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I'm good. So yeah, we had to learn everything about movement, structure, names, the muscular system, everything. I felt like I was like, shit, I might as well go ahead and be a, a doctor, you know, all, everything we learned. If I wanted to right now in the state of California, I could, you know, raise my hand because, you know, the governor is fantastic and say, hey, I want to get involved in this 
move, medical movement, health and wellness movement because of the pandemic. And I could be on the fast road to somewhere, but I'm, I'm not. I just want to focus on my production and my arts. I, I'm, I'm, I'm good where I am. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to delete some of this stuff, you guys. It's coming up. This computer is very fickle. What it's supposed to show me, it doesn't show me. And I'm supposed to be able to delete it. So yes, I definitely um, learned a lot. And not only was it to help my mom for her comfort, I learned at the same time how to take care of myself, Gigi Darling. And I sometimes suffer from migraines and I had got an MR, uh, I forget which one it is, MRI with the big doom, doom, doom machine to scan my brain from the VA about two years ago. And I found the source of my migraines. I'm the type of person that I would just get a headache and just take a Tylenol and lay down. Thank God for Tylenol PMs because I don't need, I don't like medicine. I don't need to be uh, prescribed anything, but those work really good when I have a really, really bad migraine. That's how I would treat myself like for 15 years. It was no big deal for me. But three years ago, I found out that I had a condition called an incomplete loop of Willis. That's the source of my migraines. So not only did I learn about how to take care of my mom, I learned about my own ailments of migraines. So I, I really excelled in that because it was for me too. At the same time, I was learning how to take care of Gigi Darling. Just educate yourself. You don't have to depend on a doctor or a nurse. Figure it out yourself. I think everybody should be a massage therapist as far as I'm concerned. Just like everybody should go to the military. Because now I know how to take care of myself. I know how to read the signs. I know how to write things down. I know how to ask a doctor or a nurse a question and get the correct answer. So, yeah, I learned that about myself. So that was pretty amazing. And it's not a big deal. Nobody has to feel sorry for me. You know, I don't suffer. But when I do get migraines, I just close the windows and chillax and be very, very quiet. I don't get them that often. It's so funny. I get them during the changes of weather. Do, does that happen to anyone out there that suffers migraines? Let me know. But I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll get a migraine and I'll still go to work. I don't care. It ain't stopping me. Okay. <laughs> so what else did we learn? We learned also about what? The nervous system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, sorry. Yeah. The nervous system and circulation system. You know, blood, lymph, mm -hmm. bones, how they grow, how they regenerate, how we should feed ourselves, what we should feed ourselves, hormones. And this was so such an advantage for me because number one, I'm taking care of my mom. Number two, I'm learning how to take care of myself. Number three, I'm going through menopause. So the universe always has me. Okay. And I always pay attention to it. So I'm learning all this stuff. I'm like, this is amazing. What if I would have just said class culture, I, I can't do that. She can go to, into a nursing home and we'll visit you every month. Uh-uh. That, that's not who I am. I got the benefit. Yes. I had to endure the hurt and the grieving of losing my mom. But I got so much more. It was such a benefit. And she even said it. She was like, oh, my God, you're good. She taught me about insurance and paying, uh, you know, what insurance I should get. So when I do reach her age, I'm far from it. I'm like 30 years from it. So I don't know. You know, screw what you heard. I got life to live. But I'm ready. It was like I was, everything was in order. Everything was put, being put in place for me to be ready for this stage. I'm ready. And I need to even do more class culture. I need to do more walks. I'm going to find a gym here in San Francisco where I'm going to go once a week. I'm not going to be scared. It's something about this pandemic is making people 
turn on the wrong path because of their fear. I have never been afraid of anything. I know I'll be okay, but I know I need to get back on track. Yeah. I don't care if I'm the only one out there walking on the beach at six in the morning. I'm getting back on track, but I'm not going to be out in this crazy cold weather. That's bad. But yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ain't nothing knocking me off track. No. So I have all, just think about it. I have all this knowledge. I, it was a good run, you know, um, me taking care of my mom, all that good stuff. But now I'm here. I have to continue to take care of myself. And that's one of the things she taught me. She says, take care of yourself. Here, let me make that big. Those were one of the, some of the last words she said to me was take care of yourself. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, class culture. I am going to take care of myself and be fabulous doing it. Mm -hmm. she, know the, she knew the advantages of it, and I know the <clears throat> advantages of it, and I'm going to keep doing it. Nothing's going to stop me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get back into my um, hot stones and all that good stuff. I am not going to be afraid. I am going to take care of myself and I'm going to keep track and I'm going to have more fun. Okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to delete these the same time I bring them up, but it's just not working. We're also going to talk a little bit about essential oils. I'll show you exactly what I studied. So I appreciate you. You're probably waiting for me right now, but I'm sorry. I, I just had to get this out of my system. It's like, oh, I got to talk about this. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm still friends with a couple of people. I made good friends with some people, some people not so much. It's just like any situation, just like here on YouTube. Some people don't like you. Some people like you. Some people star shit. Some people are just full of shit, right? It was the same thing. I even got in arguments with teachers. I mean, it was, it was just, it was a, it was a trip. Seven months of a trip, right? But I did it. I did it. Mm -hmm. Did I show this one before? If I did, I'm going to show it again. Learn how to relax. Create a spa moment in your house, in your day, every day. I create my spa moment right after I take a shower. Okay? I do this on purpose. E exactly what you're looking at, I do that on purpose. And I stay quiet. Minimum 15 minutes. Minimum 15 minutes. Something is here bothering me. I don't know what it is. I'm going to close that now. Create a spa moment every day. You have to. Even if it's just music. I have a whole spa playlist just for you guys. Class culture. And anybody else that wants to click it. All right. So let me share the next thing. I'm so glad I'm doing this. This feels good. It feels right because we're about to start a new month and I'm not messing with nobody. Okay. I live in my truth. And I want to help some of you ladies out there. I see you out there. I, I watch you. I listen to you. I see your videos. I see you get stressed out, but we come back for more. So in between the stressing out and coming back for more, treat yourself. Okay, I'm cleaning off my desktop. Thank you for being patient. So, yeah, we talked about the muscular system. We talked about, um, you know, uh, the brain. I learned about my, um, you know, my migraines, my incomplete loop of Willis. It's my friend now. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Okay, so what did we actually study? Let me see. Oh, let me show you this. Look, this is one day where I was a little sweaty. <laughs> These are some of my uh, classmates. Some of them were young. Some of them were old. Okay. And we would just have fun. We always wore masks. So this was what? And um, here, let me bring myself back up. Hi. Okay. <laughs> this was what? Uh, 20, 2000, 2013. Okay. September through April 14th, and she passed away in September 
14. Okay. So, um, we, I had worked so hard that day. I was, I was a little sweaty, but we were just having fun. And we had our uh, mask on that day. Um, because it was, somebody had gotten a cold and we were like, mm -mm. so anytime I ever work in a, uh, you know, in a spa or wherever I work, I'm not going to tell y'all everything. Um, <clears throat> I always have my mask on. So this pan pandemic ain't nothing but the chicken wing to me. Ain't nothing but, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Because we always wear our masks. But here we are just having fun in class. So I just wanted to show. I know y'all like receipts. So <laughs> that's a receipt of us just sitting in class. Okay. And where's another receipt? We would always do, we had requirements. We had to work in the spa where people would come in. And we had to practice our techniques and people. That's why I suggest you go to a school that's teaching new massage therapists because you get discounted rates. Yes, they not, they are not as good, but they're learning. But some of them are so fresh and eager. You get the best massage because they're putting in their best performance. Sometimes you are doing it in front of a, an instructor. Sometimes you're on your own. And the people grade you and the teachers give you credits for that grade. So this is what some of the places would look like. Okay. And just like any other massage place, people decide if they want to be naked or have panties and bras and trunks on, they decide because there is a technique called draping. We learn how to drape. It is regulated by the state, how to drape people. So I think it's very beautiful. It harkens back to shaman and people who heal and the medicine woman. So I'm all into that in my mind. I claim all of it. Mm -hmm. I heal. Yes. So this is what the uh, massage room looked like. And some people wanted you to trod the curtains. Some people didn't. It, was, it is what it is. It was just a busy place. And it was lots of fun. And it smelled so good every day. And the music. Do you ever go into a spa and hear the music? It's like, oh, I just want to live here. That's why I always have music in my background. Okay, that's how I exist on planet Earth. And I rebuke anything else. Okay. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm doing this. I am. So, yeah, my mom, mommy was really, really proud of me. She was happy for me. She was like, you could do this forever. I was massage therapist. We do take breaks because you can't use your arms and your hands all the time. It's you'll, I mean, I, my fingerprints, you guys are gone. I literally, I'm not being figuratively. My, I have no fingerprints. Now I had asked if I had, I had gotten a job with the federal government and I asked them, do you need me to register? Because I don't have fingerprints. So people who break um, laws, you're very valuable in that arena because, you know, you don't leave any finger fingerprints. You can't be charged for things, but I'm not a bad person and I don't break laws and I'm on the right side of the law. So, yeah, I have no fingerprints left. OK, <laughs> for lots of reasons. <laughs> so, yeah, I forget. There's a name for that. When I find it, I'll put it in the description box. I, I, I know I'll remember. But, yeah, I haven't had fingerprints in like, God like 10 years. <laughs> That's another story time. So yeah, let me share something else. So people get massages for good reasons and bad reasons. People have ailments. Doctors assign you to go to a massage therapist because you need help. So we also had to learn about skin. Obviously. Let me make that bigger. Skin is the largest organ of your body. Okay. We had to learn about skin. We had to learn about the heart, everything. It was a bit too much for Judy Darling. I know it. It's mine. It is what it is. I renew my license every time I need to. It's mine. It's okay. But I don't need to, you know, do heart surgery. I don't need to put a scalpel in you. But if I had to, I could. Because we were learning the same things that doctors and nurses learn. 
So that was quite interesting to me. Actually, my teachers were ex-doctors or previous doctors who just stopped practicing for one reason or another and nurses. Okay, because it was the same thing. So it was it was quite interesting. I, I, I didn't realize, and here let me show you this picture. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into, but I was I felt very proud. I felt like I had arrived. I was there. I felt like a true healer. I felt a part of the medical um, you know, machine in America. And I'm still proud of it today. So this was just me one day in the bathroom taking a selfie. <laughs> and there I am. Now that is 2014. So what is it now? You know, 2021. You've seen me. You see me now. Look, here I am. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Here, I'll make myself bigger. Same person, same face. <laughs> here, I'll put me here. Here's a side by side. <laughs> I think I look the same. <laughs> Not much of a difference. Okay. That's a good opportunity for a side by side, isn't it? There you go. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll come in even closer for the haters out there. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, not much difference. People crack me up with that nonsense. But, yeah, there I am in school just having a good day. Yeah. I often thought I, I'm going to change my um, avatar here in a couple of days. I have a new Bernice, so I'm going to change it. But, yeah, I often thought I I just always wear my hair back, you guys. I would have a ponytail. But in between me changing my avatar I told you guys I'm going to go get a hairdo in a couple of days. I'll take a picture and then I'll braid it back up and then I'll start wearing my Bernices again. But I just always wear my hair back. It's not a big deal for me. All right. So I'm glad I'm doing this. I know you guys are waiting for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having more fun talking about this, to be honest with you. Okay. So what did we study? You ask. I shall share with you. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure I'm showing you everything. Oh, okay. Before I share you what we study, we also study um, hormones and the brain. The brain is fascinating. I'm going to focus. I'm going to take one month and just focus on the brain. When you know how the brain operates, people don't get you. They know they want some of you, but they don't get how you work, how you're calm, how you move. They like what they see, but they're angry about it. And I don't care because all they have to do is study it themselves and then they'll know. But the brain is fascinating. Yeah, I could have studied the brain like every day, every day. And I'm going to take more. I'm going to take better care of my brain. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you call sus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to, I had to get serious for a moment. And it's also spiritual. Whatever entity, deity you worship, it's real. It's I, I'm going to go in for 2021. We are going to talk about it. It's very spiritual. Yeah. It's spiritual in the sense that you have to express yourself through song, dance, what you put on your body, how you wear your hair, how you smell, what you eat. So, yeah, it's that deep for me, and I'm going to keep it there, okay? Nobody's going to knock me off my perch. Mm -mm. So, yeah, I just like sharing images when I'm talking about certain things. So, what was I? I was on the path of ailments and why people come to you. Well, they come to you because they're in pain <laughs> or something's wrong. Or they've been diagnosed. One thing I loved to do was sits baths. S-I-T-Z. If you have an ailment, ladies, your lady parts have some of these icky things happening to it. Sits bath. You should do a sits bath every day, even if you're healthy. I love a old nasty a sits bath. Uh, pardon the pun. Yeah. It's healthy. So after the client would take a sits bath, they would come and get a massage for the rest of the body. 
people who don't like baths, who suffer from things that's happening in your JJ area, is because you need a bath. You don't have to put your whole body in. I love a bath. I'll, I'll, I take baths and showers. But sits baths are healthy. Okay? Go to the dollar store, buy a big tub, and just have just water in there. Now, you can decide if you want to put other things in there. That's up to you. Talk to a doctor. I am a massage therapist. Unless I'm treating you, I'm not going to give you advice. But I know I use all types of things. And it works for me. Now, sits baths go way, way back. And again, um, you know, I was my mom's caregiver. She enjoyed a good old sits bath. They go way, way back to, you know, you know, Western days. I'm in the, the West, so I'll talk about Western days, you know. And then people will wash other parts of their body. So the, a sits bath is so healthy, you don't even know. Because that's your digestive uh, system. You eat it and then it comes out down there and it's your re reproduction system. Okay. You got to keep all of that clean. A lot of people in America are diseased and, uh, if a good old fashioned sits bath, if you're not into it, get into it. Now you can get into uh, buying a, um, what do you call it? A plastic tub. Or just a regular bathtub or see i don't even have it open on here i thought i had it open a good old-fashioned one you can get off of ebay you know so get into it now some people go to resorts years ago i would uh, go to resorts this one was in spain mm -hmm. i got massage i got everything I, I got you know you go to japan taiwan go to take a trip somewhere just for spa it'll change your whole life and then on the beach there they had stones i remember coming back and the people opened up my uh, suitcase they were like what the hell are you doing this is years before i became a massage therapist i got i still have about 15 of these stones mm -hmm. natural that's what their beach looked like and i plan to go back to that place i'm not going to say where it is you'll know when i go back there and collect more, which was on the opposite of Mother Africa. And I would go out there and I would just stare. Now, my stones look different because they're from, you know, um, rivers in America. But yeah, I still honor them because they're Mother Earth and they're natural. And those are the stones that we heat up to put on our bodies at different areas, you know, different points on our body. Okay, so yeah, I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing a lot, lots of sharing, and then I can put this stuff away. But yeah, not only do you have ailments, there are different essential oils that you can select for your ailments. Mm -hmm. You have to read about that. You have to read, you have to learn, you have to be involved. You have to say, hey, I want to learn about that. Hey, I want to feel better. Hey, I want to look like Gigi Darling at her age. Okay, I want to get involved, right? So through that studying and educating yourself, you will find out what works for you. Some people like different fragrances. Some people hate lavender, you know. Some people hate rosemary. It just depends. I'm going to do a whole show on essential oils. Not today, but I am, okay? So here's a simple, simple um, recipe. Just be happy. Bergamot, grapefruit, lemon, and ylang. And it tells you how many drops. And you put that in an oil. I use coconut oil. And then you rub it on your body till it's gone. It's that easy. And it, the essential oils work on a cellular level. They work on a cellular level. Think about it. Your muscles, your bones, your, 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 your you know, joints your ailments. We can only massage so deep, but when we use a certain oil, an essential oil that goes in the skin and it penetrates and it does the rest and aromatherapy. Like right now, I can't reach it. Uh, you know, I have lotion. Sometimes I just, that 15 minutes of spa a day, I just inhale. 
and I enjoy, you know, and you have to learn how to do that. I see a lot of that on the, this, these YouTube streets, uh, people are just, uh, stressed out for no reason. So we also had fun. You know, I think like, remember I, sh I told you guys, I was there between uh, September 2013 and April 2014. We had Halloween. So remember I told you I was just obsessed with the, you know, skull and all of that. Well, we got to decorate and that was fun. So let me show you what I was uh, during Halloween. <laughs> so we had so much fun. It, it ended up being a life change, a game changer, life changing and game changing. I would have still lived a fun life, but wow, it's so much better. So I was a Borg <laughs> when I went to massage therapy uh, school. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I found this really, really cool mask on um, Amazon and I wore it to work and I won the contest. But yeah, I was Borg. I still have it somewhere. One day I'll pull it out and maybe I'll wear it again. But yeah, I was bored. <laughs> that was so much fun. We also were required that spring to do events where we would go out and serve like nonprofits or people who needed massage therapy, like at runs and walks. And there was a walk. Cirque du Soleil sponsored it. So as you can see, it says Milan. That was the name of the massage therapy school. It was in the medical district of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Just so happens it had it was right across the street from the hospital where Tupac lost his life. But yeah, there I am posing with some of the cast members of Cirque du Soleil. And it was fabulous. You can become very, very rich being a massage therapist in Las Vegas. You can massage during poker tournaments. You can be on staff at the casino massaging this, these wonderful athletes and performers and dancers. So, yes, they need massages, too, because their body is their tool. So, yeah, we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. So what else do I want to share before I go on to graduation and the end of the show? What else do I want to share? Let me see. Here's one of my goals before I, before I go on. Um, I didn't really like um, sports massage. To me, you had to have a lot of muscle and a lot of grit and, you know, it wasn't fun and foo-foo, you know, sports massage. They're, they're just into it and they're very vocal and they're, they're almost like um, exercise instructors, you know, this, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And I'm not like that. I'm just soft, quiet spa, she, she, foo-foo, you know, aromatherapy, you know, bent over candle relaxing. Right. But I did enjoy kinesiology. Now, that's something I do want to go back and study. Kinesiology is the study of movement. But yeah, we did a tournament. We did a soccer tournament. And I did a couple of massages for a couple of guys. I was like, shit, I'm tired. So yeah, that wasn't my thing. But yeah, you can have a great career as a physical therapist as well when you become a massage therapist. So that's something you're looking forward to. Go for it. You can work for an NFL team. You can work for a gym. You can work for a chiropractor. You can work for a hospital. Very lucrative. Very lucrative. It was just not my jam. Okay, not my jam. But we had to do it in order to graduate. I only did a couple of events, so it was no big deal. All right, so let's get into some of the courses that you take. I just want to make sure I'm pulling up the right thing. Yeah. You can see my grades. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry if you can't. Let me see if I can close some things so you, I can get a little closer. I can make it bigger. Give me a second. I need to find it anyway because that's kind of small for me. Yes, it is. And then I'll show you my certificate and all that good stuff. 
yeah, this is good. I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. And I know it's Saturday night. I know there's something going on on the YouTube street, so I don't feel bad that I'm late. Sorry, I am late, though. I just had a lot to do. It's the end of the month. And then I'll show you my resume. And that'll be it. And I hope I encourage someone out there to become a massage therapist or physical therapist or just study it. And maybe, you know, that'll help you in your nursing, you know, career or whatever. But I found it seven months of my life are so much richer that you don't even know. I do carry myself in a certain way because I do have this knowledge. And some people are like, wow, you did all of that. Wow, you studied all of that. Okay, here's my transcript. No, I got to make it smaller. Sorry if you can't see it, but I have to look at it so I can read it. So let me see what you're looking at. Okay. All right. So as you can see, you can see the dates that I entered, the dates of the classes, the course name, the grade that I got. Yes, I sucked at anatomy. It was hard. Okay. But I passed it. But the units I completed, and my GPA was 3.84. I was, I would have been happy with a 2.5, trust and believe. But it was, I was that engaged. And with my mommy's help. Can you imagine? I have that for the rest of my life. Gold can't, doesn't, it's not even the same realm with that. She helped me with this. And was proud of me. And she lived to see it. And she didn't pass away until she found out that I was in art film school. Then she knew I was okay. She knew she could leave. We studied clinical internship strategies for success, intro to anatomy and physiology, Swedish massage basics, ethics, anatomy, practical anatomy, dynamic practicum, kinesiology. I'm so into kinesiology, you guys. Sports massage, siachu, Siachu, yeah, that's how you say it. Uh, pathology for the massage therapist, passive joint mobilization, deep tissue, massage therapy, communication and law, prenatal and pediatric massage, business management, acupressure, not puncture pressure, CPR, first aid, chair massage, reflexology, your feet. Aromatherapy and hydrotherapy, water, spa, physiology and professional development. Those are every, that's everything I study. Mm -hmm. Everything I study. And the clinical internship is during that whole process where we had to give massages. Okay. Amazing, huh? Yeah, that's why I, I know I am I am a part of the medical industry, the animal, okay, of medicine. And I like it. I, I'm into it. It's look, it's I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So what else? They taught you everything you needed to know. And in one of the classes, I think it was the business class, we had to pretend like we had a business, right? So we had to come up with a menu and all of that good stuff. So let me get there. Okay. So I named my spa Wells Massage and Spa Services, right? I had 50 minute, 80 minute, 120 and 180 minute sessions. And I gave them prices and all of that, you know, because they made sure you were going to be successful. So you got to decide what techniques you were good at. And the teachers were like, no, you can't charge that because I know you're not good at that. But you can charge that because I know you are good at that. So they were hands on at every moment of the process. And it was fantastic, you guys. Lymph drainage was number one because why? That was the reason why I went to massage therapy. To help my mom and her edema so she could stay in her home. So we could live that fabulous resort life where she was living. So she didn't have to have a stranger nurse come in. Okay. Aromatherapy, trisage body soothing treatment, therapeutic stone massage, 
sebum control massage scrub okay pregnancy swedish deep reflexology sports massage scrub hand and foot hydration treatment those were my specialties okay and i love each and every one of them to this day okay those are my specialties. Let me hit stop. I hope it's not too glitchy. I'm supposed to be partying. I'm coming on, I swear. I'm taking my time. No one's going anywhere. It's pandemic. It is what it is. I'll get there. Okay. So you had to also do a code of ethics. Oh, yes. So here it comes. Now, if anyone ever wants to see this, I was thinking to myself, well, where could I put this? So I don't know. I don't know if anybody's that interested in it, but you can get a screenshot. But you had to come up with this. And this was early on in the process. Because remember, I started the courses in September and I ended in, I graduated in April 2014. So 9 23 13, commitment to high quality care. I'm not going to read each one. Commitment to do no harm. Commitment to inform consent informed to consent, commitment to personal and professional boundaries, commitment for professionalism, acknowledge the inherent worth and individuality of each person by not discriminating or behaving in any prejudiced manner, project a professional image, uphold highest standards of professionalism, accept responsibility to harm no one, in any way, mental or emotional. Mm -hmm. Be truthful in advertising and marketing and refrain from misrepresenting, misrepresenting your services. Okay? So I'll go slowly just in case somebody wants to screenshot for your own personal reasons. This is always attached to my resume, you guys. I want people to know who I am and who they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. I live by a code of ethics every day of my life and I'm good with it. So this is what my resume looks like for massage therapy. I have other resumes. I have literally three resumes in my whole life. It's ridiculous to provide the highest quality of massage therapy while utilizing my past working skills and business experiences. So after my mom passed away, I went to work with like, um, other spas. I went to work in shishi spas and casinos. Um, I, I could work all over the world, anywhere, as long as I understand their language. Um, and as you can see, I graduated magna cum laude. Yes, I did. It was fantastic. I had perfect attendance. I did not miss a day. It was so much fun, but because you're a caregiver and they always said, I remember they were like, well, you're a caregiver and you have to go out and do things or go to groups and things. I'm like, where I'm going here. They were like, oh, that's good enough. Yeah, it was fun. It's like going to a spa every day. You know, of course you had to learn and do all this other stuff. And of course I put more work stuff in there. Here are my skills up above. Then my work experience. I was a legal man in the Navy, diet, a diet a therapist in the Air Force, a banker, you know, management, all that good stuff. Okay. Stuff you already know about me. It's not a big deal. I dox myself. But yeah. Yeah. So I'm working on ways and, 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 and things that I'm incorporating this into my production world. And it's coming out really, really good. I'm really happy about it. I have no complaints. I'm good over here. <laughs> I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So let me close that. And I'm coming to an end on this. And then I get to have fun and end the day with some music. Because we are celebrating birthdays today. It's going to happen. I'm, I know you guys are waiting for me, but it's okay. It's okay. I know I know you can keep yourself busy in these YouTube streets. Here is my certificate of completion, massage therapy. And I can take this to any state. I'm working on it now, class culture. 
certain states I want to be certified in for certain reasons. And I'll tell you when I do it and after I do it. But yeah, there, when I walked that and gave that to my mother, she, she was in her bed and she just held it and looked at it and was so proud of me. And I'm proud of her because she's the reason why I did it. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole industry. We have associations, we have conventions. It's so much fun being a massage therapist. Among my other skills and my life experiences, we had a fantastic graduation, of course, right? Here's one of my teachers, because this is the beef sector, you don't need to know names. One of my teachers, okay? Of, of course, I'm wearing my rope. You're okay, cum laude. One of my teachers, and it was so cool, because after I graduated, he, was, he started calling me his colleague, so I thought that was kind of cool. And here I am about to go take the stage. I just thought that was a cool picture because the sunlight was shining down on me. Like all of my ancestors were, were there with me. So it was just a cool picture. Okay. And this is, um, I, I wasn't top of the class, but the lady that was top of the class, we both took a picture together. They wanted us to take a picture together. She had the gold rope. I had the silver. I was like, silver matches my colors anyway. So. <laughs> You know, I can have fun. And you can see back there, there was a stylist back there helping everyone. So it was awesome. So, you know, it's Vegas. We do it up in Vegas. Okay. So, yeah, there we are in our gowns. It was so much. My mom, she wanted to be there, but I was like, no, mom, because then I would have to focus on you. Um, here we are uh, just waving and having fun at each other. I don't know why I was on the other side of the room. All my besties were on that side of the room. You know how they do the alphabet shit. So, yeah, we were waving and screaming and having a good time. So, yeah, that was one side of the room. And the other side of the room were my instructors. And, um, yeah, I, I miss all of them. I try to keep in touch, but it's really hard, you know. Uh, since I've moved away from Las Vegas a year ago, it's I've lost track of a lot of people. But it, it, it's okay. Life goes on. So, yeah, it was a great experience, and I'll never – that was more fun than actually moving and living in Las Vegas as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but what things what, – what am I, I going to do with all this in the future? What, what, what do you expect from Gigi Daughter? Well, we're going to talk more about psychic abilities and chakras because – that's what I learned. And that's what I really want to delve into these next 30 years of my life. I want to focus on our psychic abilities and our chakras to enable our health and wellness and healing. That's what I want to do. The third eye, the throat, the solar plexus, okay, the, our crown. That's what I, if you want to get a screenshot, get a screenshot of this. When I was a little girl, eight years old, I picked a book out of the library and my mom said, what made you get that book? I said, I have no idea. It was a book on clairvoyance. So for her to see that journey from that little eight-year-old to this adult taking care of her, and it's all in the realm of clairvoyance, she just got a good old kick out of that. And so do I. So, yeah, that, that, that was just something for us to share together. Because, again, I was her oops. She had no idea she was pregnant with me until like four months. And she was like, I don't want another kid. And I turned out to be the best thing that happened to her. One of my goals in 2021 is to buy this chair. Okay. <laughs> I know it costs $3,000, but I'm getting that chair. Because even though we're massage therapists, we can't really massage ourselves. But as much money as I spend, I'm like, shit, I'm, I need a chair. Because it is a pandemic and I don't need to go to a spa every time. Sometimes I just want to lay in it for like 10 minutes and then go to bed. I'm getting a massage chair. I'm claiming it. It's mine. I don't care if I have to work from 8 to 11 at a McDonald's somewhere just to, earn, just to get the money to do it. I'm getting it. I don't know how yet class culture, but I'm getting that chair. They're, they run about three grand to four grand. And I've been to conventions where you can go and get it at a discount price. So that's, that's my goal. That that's my plan. 
you know, to get it to buy it right off the floor and they'll send it to you. So, yeah, I'm getting a massage chair so I can sit in that bad boy for the rest of my freaking life. OK, so I think that's it. One more thing. And then that's the end of this episode. Spa and water and massage and healing and medicine goes way, 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 way back. In art, now I've shared this in my Art Smart video, this image. Um, spas were community spas, you know, back in the Roman days, the Egyptian days, in Africa, everywhere. We have to get back to that life. Let me get myself on the camera. Oops. Oops. No, that don't look good. Let's go back to this. We have to get back to this life. Your bath is just not to clean yourself. It's not there just to take away the grime from the day before or to make yourself smell better. It's when you're there in the water, be there, be present, put beautiful pictures up that remind you of something you like, no matter what it is, decorate your bathroom the way you want to decorate it. Choose whatever color. I'm going for something new this year. And I'm going to talk about that too. You know, embrace the fact that water, we are what, 80, 90% water. Embrace it. It's over there. I can't reach it. Embrace it. Know that that 10, 20, 30 minute in your day is for you. That's your spa moment. Embrace it. I do. It makes me feel so much better when I have a spa moment. And the rest of the day is was crappy as hell because I know I can wake up in the next morning and have another spa moment. I'm going to show you some things, some pictures on my Instagram, maybe, maybe even here, I'll show them to you on how I decorate my little corners in my, you know, my bathroom, my, uh, you know, um, I have my crash pad bath, uh, spa as well, because I don't, I'm coming and going, I'm in and out, you know, I'm flying here, I'm going there. I, I make sure I have my spa moment just like the ancient people did, did, you know, we don't, we don't have where we go to the river and things like that. We have to set it up. We have to take care of ourselves. So that was another reason why I wanted to come on and share this with you. That's my licensed massage therapy and me story. I, I've been wanting to do that. I said, no, I got to start the year off right. I got to get it in. So I'm going to end the, the video now. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, like, and share. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you do. I didn't do any links or anything like that. I hope you listen and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to sign up for a massage in February. Let's start it. Let's do it. You know, February is the month of love, Valentine's Day, all that good stuff. You don't have to have somebody in your life. You can just take care of yourself. Buy yourself some candy. But definitely get back into massage. Get back in. Don't be afraid. They're not touching you. They are, are helping to heal you. Just like when you go to a doctor and a nurse. Because I get all these um, interesting comments like, I don't want anybody touching me. I've never had a massage. Uh, you have somebody in your life that touches you. You have sex with people. You kiss people. You sit with people. You associate with people. You're in a work, you're in a work situation with people. You go to a doctor, you let them touch you. Don't fool yourself. Somebody has tricked you into thinking you don't need that part. Of, you don't need this part of healing in your life. And you do. Try it. Let me know. Okay? Thank you so much. I could talk forever and ever. I'm going to click off and I'm going to have a birthday party in about 10 minutes. Okay? Thank you so much. I love you, all my hearts of gold. I appreciate you. I'm glad I'm back on camera. Okay, see you soon. Bye.